Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie, this is going to be my Star Wars Clone Wars Season 7 Episode 2 video, A Distant Echo. There were a whole bunch of easter eggs, so we'll break it all down. If you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the Clone Wars episodes. It's the final season, and we're doing a Disney Plus giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber, and let me know if you think that Anakin noticed that Padme is super pregnant in this episode. Obviously, careful for spoilers, if you haven't seen the episode yet, we'll do top 10 WTF and Easter eggs as we go along. There are a bunch of Easter eggs, so starting with number 10, it picks up with them returning to the base on an axis. Anakin is pretty sure the Council will approve the mission to save Echo. You have to remember that there is still a hierarchy. The Council still approves these war missions that they go on. They're controlling a lot of the war effort. The reason why Palpatine set it up that way is so that he could position the Jedi as this faction that's controlling the war. So if things went badly, which sometimes they did, per his machinations, he could point at the Jedi if the Senate got really pissed that they lost the battle and blame the Jedi for that. So it's all part of his grand plan to turn popular opinion against the Jedi as he slowly destroys them quietly from the shadows. Obviously, we're not quite to Revenge of the Sith territory yet. Number nine, we learned that Anakin has been Skyping with Padme secretly, but the clones, obviously Rex knows about it, so he's been hiding it from Obi-Wan Kenobi this whole time, which is funny because it turns out that Obi-Wan Kenobi knows all about it too. But this just sort of gives you the context for how they maintain their relationship during the Clone Wars because that lasted for a couple of years. They got married secretly at the end of Attack of the Clones. So when we originally saw the prequels, you were just kind of left to wonder how their relationship played out while Anakin was busy running around the galaxy amidst the Clone Wars. Turns out just a whole lot of secret Skype sessions. But I do love Rex's reaction to this and when he tries to mislead Obi-Wan Kenobi and Obi-Wan is just like, you're going to have to do way better than that. You're terrible at lying. Padme gives him some sage advice. As usual, she's the more wise one out of this relationship. I think that's part of the idea. It also gives you a better idea for why she was able to become a senator when she was so young. But a lot of Anakin's storyline is a mirror for Rex's storyline, like the whole tag of the episode. The search for truth begins with belief, having belief, having faith. So Anakin needs to have more faith. Speaking of Easter eggs, there's a poster behind them. I don't read Arabesh, obviously, like, but I believe if you decode this, there's probably some sort of Easter egg. Anytime there's written language on a big poster or something in the background, usually they find a way to work an Easter egg into that. So if you are super hardcore and you can read Arabesh, just write below what that poster says in the comments. Number eight, though, obviously, Obi-Wan Kenobi lets us know that he knew all about Anakin and Padme the entire time. Of course, he's not a dumbass. I love the way he sort of calls Anakin on it too. Like he lets him know, I know exactly what's happening when he says, I hope you at least told Padme hello. And it gives Anakin pause like he halts in his tracks for a second and thinks about it like, wait a minute, how am I going to play this? Oh, well, we'll just brush it off like nothing bad happened and he just walks away. Obi-Wan Kenobi gets really flustered at the fact that he's not following proper Jedi and military protocols, throwing caution to the wind. It's just more classic Anakin. He's been like this the whole time, but obviously by the time we get to Revenge of the Sith, it's all about him trying to save Padme when he starts getting the Force visions of the future, thinking that she's going to die. So this is just laying the seeds for him really going off book, so to speak, and saving Palpatine, eventually becoming Darth Vader of the Sith. Number seven WTF, Hunter tells Anakin that he's not totally sure who their special Clone Force 99 Commando Force reports to exactly, but they have worked with Commander Cody in the past. This is another one of those moments where it seems like Palpatine pulling the strings from behind where he's playing both sides of the war to his advantage. They've addressed this in previous seasons when they've done the setup for Order 66 where you have Count Dooku talking to Emperor Palpatine when he's acting as Darth Sidious, like he has his hood up and he's speaking with his Darth Sidious voice. It's just more the idea that a lot of the clones don't really know what's going on. Like Clone Force 99 isn't totally sure where they get their orders from. They just go and they wreck stuff or they blow stuff up. You look in the background, you see Wrecker is lifting a gonk droid. We saw a bunch of those on the Mandalorian series. 
Number six, though, the Dragon Riders of Skako Minor, also reminding you of the mythosaurs of ancient Mandalore from the Mandalorian series when he was trying to ride the Blurg. Your ancestors rode the ancient mythosaur. Surely you can ride this silly creature from the Ewok movies. That's right. If you don't remember, the Blurg is actually from the Ewok TV movies. We've never seen the Poltex before, but they talk about their quote unquote flying reptiles. It's basically them flying dragons around, which is still pretty cool, but they carry Anakin off. He loses his lightsaber again, which is a bit of a running gag in Star Wars movies. Anakin losing his lightsaber, Obi-Wan Kenobi getting pissed off at him for losing his lightsaber. Don't lose this. This weapon is your life. They spend a lot of episode one setting up Clone Force 99's different abilities that they have. They're super clones, basically, so they're super badass. So Hunter's able to catch a ride, and then it becomes number five, the clones versus the Poltex to try and save Anakin. But obviously, it's a bit of a misdirect. Like, they cause a big rock slide. You see that they could probably take them pretty easily, but the whole idea is the Poltex don't want to have anything to do with their war. It was pretty clear that they didn't want to hurt Anakin, but it takes tech decoding their language to find out exactly what's going on. Then Anakin is able to explain to them what the Techno Union, the Separatists, and Wat Tambor are doing on their planet. Now, this is the reason why the war came here, because the Separatists are using it as a secret base. I kind of expected them to take this storyline with the Poltex a little bit deeper. I expected there to be a little bit more going on here, but it was really more about them just finding common ground and helping them get to that secret base. So number four, Wat Tambor comes back. If you don't remember him, he's been in a couple of the movies. He was in Attack of the Clones and he was in Revenge of the Sith. He also does some stuff after the events of Revenge of the Sith in the expanded material. When the Separatists wound up losing the war at the beginning of Revenge of the Sith, what happened is is that a lot of their forces, including Wat Tambor and some of the Techno Union, just went around raising, scorching the earth. It was very Lord of the Rings, scorching of the Shire kind of event. And if you're not a big Lord of the Rings fan, don't worry. There's going to be an Amazon Lord of the Rings series that I'll be doing episode videos for. I'll talk about all that stuff when that premieres, but I don't think that's going to be till next year. We learned that Wrecker, even though he's super badass, super strong, is afraid of heights. I think that's just giving the other clones of Clone Force 99 more personality. Like That's the whole idea, is that they're different than the other clones. Number three, WTF, classic Star Wars trope. As they're infiltrating the base, they tell them they're going to do it nice and quiet. Things are going to go real quickly. They're going to slip in, get Echo, come out. But things go completely off the rails immediately. They just start hacking their way through all the droids. A lot of cool Anakin Skywalker, lightsaber action in close quarters. Wat Tambor also reminds them that he allowed them to do this. He predicted their every move because of their quote-unquote secret algorithm. But then they call him on that bullcrap because they know it's Echo that's feeding them the information. They just don't know how it's happening. So number two, Rex finds Echo, and it's a huge WTF moment. Welcome back, Echo. Haven't seen you in a couple seasons. Looking a little bit different. We find out that the Techno Union has basically been taking the information directly from Echo's brain this whole time, ever since the events of Season 3. The reason why they turned him into a cyborg is so that they could take the information from his mind and control him, keeping him from escaping. What have they done to you? We we have to get to the shuttle to escape the Citadel. No! I love the way they play that heartbreaking scene. Obviously, Rex is probably the most well-developed clone character from the Star Wars saga because his story extends all the way into Star Wars Rebels in the future. But I'll talk more about this when we get to Order 66 territory later in the season. I'm hoping that there's some overlap with Order 66, and they're trying to set this up so that you sympathize more with the clones when they're forced to turn against the Jedi. But if you don't remember, Rex is one of the characters that did not turn against the Jedi because he was able to remove his bio-implant chip. You also notice that a lot of the Echo cybernetic parts seemingly foreshadow Anakin Skywalker's eventual future when he's anointed Darth Vader, then his body is destroyed on Mustafar, everyone post your high ground memes, then Emperor Palpatine uses Sith technology to turn him into a cyborg effectively to keep him alive. So number one, huge WTF, what happened to Echo after the events of season three? He remembers who he is, but doesn't immediately remember how he got here, how he was turned into a cyborg, but he does start reciting lines of dialogue from the last episode that he appeared in. What happened is that after the Republic forces left, the Separatists came back in, they found him barely alive, and then sold him to the Techno Union, who then hacked his mind and has been using him for information for the past few seasons to give the Separatists a major advantage in all their big battles. All the information they were able to steal from him clearly helped a lot. They kind of addressed that at the beginning of Season 7, Episode 1. But there's still a lot of big Republic wins in the war, so it's not like he completely turned the tide of battle. 
a lot of the end of the war will overlap with the later episodes and the beginning of Revenge of the Sith. They did say that there would be crossover with the events of Revenge of the Sith, like Anakin learning that Padme was pregnant, but we don't know exactly how many episodes and how far into the plot of Revenge of the Sith this is going to go. There's a bunch of Ahsoka, a bunch of Mandalorian stuff coming up, so if you spotted any big Easter eggs in the episode that I didn't mention in the video, just write them below in the comments, and obviously my episode 3 video will post next week. I'll put a link for all my Clone Wars episodes in the description, everyone click here for my brand new Mandalorian Season 2 teaser, and click here for my brand new Spider-Man 3 Marvel video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay awesome, this is the way.